So Tim, Chris had a client, Chris, our property info manager, had a, had a question from a client about mechanics liens and the standard owner's policy. I know in the past, years ago, there were times that it was automatic with the standard policy. What do we call that? The homeowner's additional protection mm -hmm. endorsement. Yes. And that covered, what, what items did that cover? The primary coverage was unrecorded labor material lien rights. That has always been the primary coverage for that endorsement. Right. And you, at the point in time, we did issue it with all standard owner's policies. With the passage of time, we have changed that policy and will not attach that endorsement automatically to all policies. So a good question for any buyer or a realtor representing a buyer is, do I have affirmative coverage for unrecorded labor material liens? If the title company says, no, you don't, your next question is, why don't I, and how do I get that affirmative coverage? Okay. So if you can't get it on the standard, what are reasons we wouldn't give it on a standard if it was, or, or any title company for that matter? Why, why wouldn't we give that endorsement? It's based on a risk analysis of new construction we may not feel comfortable covering that unrecorded labor material lien issue. We may not feel that the buyer may be solvent enough. The builder may not, excuse me, the builder may not be solvent enough to cover all those liens. The question has to be asked, so if I don't have it, why don't I? And that will get the process started to working as to why don't I, what do I need to do to get it? Okay. So now the, the homeowner's policy, the 98, the 1998 homeowner's policy. Yeah. Now that, that, that covers mechanics liens. That right also there, covers right? mechanics liens, but title companies, again, normally will not give that policy coming out of a builder developer selling to an individual. Okay, what about, what are other situations? Acreage, waterfront? I... Yeah, yeah, the 98 homeowner's policy, we're always gonna take a special look to some of the underlying risk involved as an insurer. Waterfront property, very expensive. We're actually going to be looking at it because we cannot define exactly where the boundaries are. Acreage, again, the same thing. Too much area to cover, don't know where the fence lines are. Probably not going to be comfortable issuing that policy. But again, as a buyer or a realtor representing the buyer, the question should be asked, can I get this coverage? And if I can't, why can't I? Or how can we obtain that coverage? Your failure to respond and ask that question early in the process could cause you potential problems after the closing. Okay. So, so asking how they can obtain that, that policy, what, what, what are some, what are some conditions we would put on a, a homeowner or a, a prospective buyer for getting that policy? Well, it wouldn't be so much the burden of the buyer. What we may have to do is sit down and talk to the builder developer. Can we get lien waivers from all the subcontractors out there? Can, and as well as have the general contractor give us his lien release for any potential work that he has done. So there are ways, and they take time, but we may be able to get that affirmative coverage after asking some questions and getting some additional paperwork in. Okay, so if I'm, if I'm a real estate agent and I've got my buyer on a waterfront property and the title company is unwilling to give the 1998 homeowner's policy, what conditions would they have to meet for us to go ahead and issue that policy? Normally what's going to happen as a title company, we may set up a general exception. Questions of encroachments around the perimeter of the property, okay. which again takes away the, the impact of coverage for the client. In this case with waterfront property, I would strongly suggest they talk to an attorney and, and look at getting a, the extended owner's policy okay. where we actually insure the boundaries of and, the property. And we're going to require a survey on that or an inspection? What do you think? The likelihood is we're going to require a survey. We will send an inspector out to look at the boundaries and make a determination whether we will require a survey. So our first step is we'll send out an inspector. If he comes back and cannot locate any survey monuments, then we're going to say we're going to require a survey. Okay, and, and for a survey on a on an extended homeowner's um, or a homeowner's policy, I should say, what are, what type of survey are we looking for on that? 
it all, in most cases, we're just going to require a full boundary line survey be done by the surveyor, something that will be on mylar that will be eventually recorded. Okay. Well, what is, is there any difference between that and an ALTA policy? What, or, I'm sorry, an ALTA survey, what distinguishes a... a well, depending upon what we find on the inspection, we can require that we get a full ALTA land survey, which would disclose the location of all improvements, residence, structures, outbuildings. If everything seems to appear to be within the building envelope and inside the boundary lines, I'll sometimes simply just require a boundary survey to get the actual location of fences, rockeries, walls. Uh, so that we can move forward with that. Okay.